right, good morning. Good morning. Well, all right, I have one for you today. There was this secret agent who was sent to Ireland to pick up some very sensitive information from another agent named Murphy. Yeah. So his instructions were to go to this small town, this small, a village, not even a town, outside of Dublin and walk from one area of the village to the next to the next until he met his fellow agent. Now he'd know he met the right man when he recognized this code phrase, the sun is shining, the grass is growing, and the cows are ready for milking. Yeah. So outside of Dublin, he starts walking down this country road, and he meets a farmer with a cart. And he says, I'm looking for a man named Murphy. And he says, well, you're in luck. Uh, the butcher, oh, the blacksmith, oh, 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 uh, the baker, the, the widow, oh, me. Uh, he leans in, and he whispers the secret code. The sun is shining, the grass is growing, and the cows are ready for milking. Oh, says the farmer, you're looking for Murphy the spy. He lives right over there. <laughs> I like it. I like it. So Ernest Holmes, the founder of our church, said that love is the self-givingness of spirit, that that's what God does, gives of itself, that spirit gives of itself and all that it is, is love. And so love is the self-givingness of spirit through the desire of life to express itself in terms of creation. Another way of saying this is that God is always seeking a fuller and greater expression of itself. God is always trying to put more of itself into the world by means of us. Yeah, that's it. So the path of love, I believe, is the path of God. And so love is free from condemnation even as it is free from fear is what we read in the textbook. Free from condemnation, even as it is free from fear. Now, I don't know about you, but every once in a while, somebody creeps into my life who I find a little bit challenging. I don't know, maybe I'm the only one. I, my latest is that I have a neighbor who is not madly in love with my dogs. I don't understand it. I mean, I really don't. I just think they're incredible and adorable. And if he would just let them crawl into his bed, he would know, you know? <laughs> But he does not seem receptive to uh, any contact. Uh, and so uh, I get to uh, work with this experience, right? Because what we teach is whatever's on our plate is perfect for our own development. So you don't have to have a neighbor who doesn't like your dogs. You could just pick anybody in your life. Because my invitation to us today is I'm going to ask us to start changing our thinking, changing our consciousness, changing our mind about someone. This does not mean they're coming to dinner. Okay, I'm asking us to start by changing our mind because we teach everything begins with an idea. All right, so we'll come back to this. That, but, but you be thinking about who that person is for you right now. Okay, now let me say also this, that not doing this work only inhibits the possibility of what your life could be. When we do this work, the spiritual work that I'm talking about, our life gets better because our consciousness gets more uplifted, expanded, it's clearer. There's nothing that's contradicting the flow of the divine in us, and so therefore the divine flows better by means of us. So, Ernest says that love is a cosmic force whose sweep is irresistible. Isn't that great? That love is a cosmic force whose sweep is irresistible. We know that love is... is is powerful and it is healing. So something I love about religious science, something that's always um, sort of made it work really well for me, is that um, it makes room for whatever your path has been up until now. So all of the things that you've been through, all of the spiritual things, all of the workshops, all of the uh, you know, programs and everything else, you know, it's all contributed to where we are in consciousness right now today. And so we don't see any of it as a mistake. None of it was bad. We got learning. We got growth. We got something from all of it. And so we recognize in religious science that there are many paths to God. In fact, there are so many paths to God, I always say, because God's the only place to go. And eventually you're going to wind up there. You know? So all paths, I think, meet at the top of the mountain. You know, and the path up the mountain that we were talking about 
is absolutely, unquestionably, a path of love. All of the great masters in all traditions have essentially taught this. Now, this is not about personal love, okay? That's why I said they don't have to come to dinner, at least yet. You know, this is not about personal love. It's a more universal goodwill. Let's think of it like that, universal goodwill, or a personal high regard for all other beings. Um, a friend was telling me how uh, he had been meditating uh, the other day, and in his meditation, he asked to be useful. And he was really into it. It's like, God, I want to be useful. I want to be useful. I want to do good in the world. And he was really, really focused on this and saying, you know, show me some way that I can really be of service. So, you know, just as an aside, where we have really sincere questions, the universe has sincere answers. So don't ask sincere questions if you don't want a sincere answer, okay? So he continues to meditate, meditate, meditate. Five minutes later, the doorbell rings. This is pretty quick. And it's someone he knows who needs a place to stay for 10 days. They're moving. They have a new place. It just won't be ready for 10 days. And it's taken them everything they have financially to get into the new place, blah, 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 and all that stuff. So his mind immediately went to the place of, wait a minute, this isn't what I meant. <laughs> I want it to be of service, but not like this. But you know, he put himself out there. And the universe responded. So, you know, the love of God within us, which I believe is perfectly natural to every one of us, is always seeking to be expressed. So divine life is, is always seeking this fuller and greater expression of itself as love in the world. And that happens because of us. So Emmett Fox, who is a metaphysical writer, many of you will know his work from Sermon on the Mount and other books that he's written. Emmett Fox said this, that all fear turns out to be simply the absence of love. That's so simple, isn't it? He says that all fear turns out to be simply the absence of love. So we've heard that um, fear hath torment, but perfect love casts out fear. So we all understand the torment part about fear, how something we're afraid of can really, really torment us. It can just chew at us and grind at us again and again and again. But if we could have that consciousness that is just filled with love, it would cast out the fear. This is like that analogy about how the light casts out the darkness. The darkness doesn't know to argue. You know, the darkness just is cast out. It ceases to exist by the light. So where is this perfect love? Well, it's within us, we teach. You know, it's just covered up by fear. I got uh, a call from someone who was very upset uh, that someone in their life had done something very unkind to her. And so I told her I did not uh, believe that people were intentionally hurtful. Why I say that is because I don't think that this person got up in the morning and said, hmm, let me do something today that's really going to zing it to her. I mean, we don't do that, right? People don't do that. So I told her I did not believe that people were intentionally hurtful, that they were fearful, as we can all understand that we've all had times when we have been full of fear ourselves. And that's usually how we act in, a un, in an unloving way because we are fearful, that we are not consciously remembering that we are part of God. And the truth is that we are here to express God. So in a moment of unconsciousness, you know, in a moment when we believe we could be separate from God, we act in a way that is contrary to our true nature which is love, which is the spirit of God within us. You know, metaphysics teaches us that we can get rid of any difficulty as soon as we love God more than we love the difficulty. We can get rid of any error as soon as we love God more than we love the error. People say, well, I don't love the error, but think about it, how sometimes we take the error really to heart. You know, we think about it all the time. We tell everybody who will listen. You know, we daydream about it. We form a support group around it. You know, or whatever. You know what I mean? But people sometimes get very, very attached to the error. And it makes me think they have not even conceived of what their, their life would and could be like without the error. If the error were removed from their life, if the upsetting condition did not exist for them, how would their life be? You know, I, now, people say, well, I don't love the error. I want the error to go away. But 
I come back again with them. Why do we give it so much time? Why do we give it so much attention? Why do we put so much energy on what we don't want? See, we have to put that energy and attention on loving God instead. That means, you know, are we making the effort to be loving in the areas that do not come so easily to us, you know? Because again, we all understand that it's really easy to love the people who behave the way we want them to behave, who show up the way we want them to show up, who say the kind of things we like to hear. Those people are easy to love. I don't think we score any points for that. I'm sorry. But what about the ones who don't believe the way we want them to believe, or say the things we want them to say, or show up in the way we would really like them to show up? See, I think... Are we praying? Are we treating? Are we doing our spiritual work lifting those people and those situations up on a regular basis? No? Mm. Then maybe we're loving the error. Think back to that thing I asked you to think about at the beginning of my talk. All right? Maybe, maybe we're loving the error. You know, so if it is not love, it's fear, right? Anger, jealousy, hate, condemnation, those are just all faces of fear, I think. Hmm? Um, this is a belief, you know, I, I see this show up in so many insidious ways, the belief that there is not enough to go around. But God is infinite. We teach that. But people think, oh, you know, I forgave over here. I can't forgive here. I love over here. I can't just love over here. Oh, I bend for these people over here. I can't do that forever, you know. But... That's just that belief that there is not enough to go around. God is infinite, we teach. You know, so these beliefs are actually, I think, something that constrict us. They constrict the free flow of life through us. This is why we have to build, and it takes work. It takes an ongoing influx of, of our human spiritual effort to build a consciousness of love within ourselves, because this is the kingdom that we're seeking first. And then all things will be added. The kingdom is that loving place within us. Because the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and everything else will be added. I love that everything else will be added. I love that part. I want the everything else added right now. Yeah, <laughs> everything added right now. Any, you know, any, any time between now and right now is a really good time, God. I say that every time I buy a lottery ticket. Any time between now and right now is the perfect time to win. Do you ever look at the amounts on the lottery? You know, 121 million. 48 million, and then you see 6 million, you go, oh, 6 million, that's not worth it, you know? <laughs> like, like 6 million wouldn't make a huge difference, you know? Oh, my God, oh, I'm not going to buy that ticket. Oh, my God. So, so think, about, think about this, um, that our life right now is the perfect opportunity to do this work. Our surroundings, the people we meet, are so perfect for the evolution of our consciousness, now think about it. Think about who's knocking at your door, like that man uh, who came to see me, who wanted to be of, of service, you know? Who's knocking your door down right now? Anybody? See, it's like they're special assignments from God. You know, those people who are a little challenging, a little troublesome, a little more difficult. It's like those are very special assignments from God, sent just for us. Now, don't you feel special? Huh? You know? That here, be loving in this situation, is what the universe says. Here, raise your consciousness around this. Mm -hmm. So, here's where we have to know and declare that we are in charge of our own consciousness. I don't have to react. I get to respond. I get to choose how I respond. And I think we have to expect from... Um, I think we have to expect that we will get to a place. You know? So we don't have to be there yet, but we have to expect that we're going to get there where we are able to expel from our mind any thoughts of condemnation of self or other. Right? So people say, well, I just, I just couldn't help myself. You know? Well, we had better if we want our life to be better. You know? We, we, we've got... We've got to start. So um, I've always liked this car uh, cartoon of Garfield. You know Garfield, the cat who eats lasagna? That's what I remember about Garfield. I like Garfield. So Garfield said, um, I, I saw one recently. Said, Garfield said, my pet peeve is people who never finish anything. 
I do not happen to be one of these people. My philosophy is never start anything. <laughs> I thought that was really cute. You know? So if we, if we get back what we give out, I would rather grow through love than through adversity, through pain, through difficulty. Wouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. You know, so, uh, because science of mind teaches us that we are co-creators with the divine mind. And the principle is manifesting according to how we think about it, right? So, oh, I look and I think, oh, here I'm judging. I've got to let that go. What am I going to do instead? Choose God instead. Let me think about God instead. Let me think some spiritual thought instead of that judging, 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 judging. I choose peace. I choose love. I choose joy. Because otherwise, I'm off of the principle, right? I cannot allow myself to hate a person or a group or a country. First of all, it's not good for me because I'm putting that out there. It's all coming back to me. And it comes back usually multiplied at the worst time possible is my experience, right? That's just the karmic component of it. So am I going to continue to give my power and happiness to things at the level of effect? You know, the metaphysics, science of mind is all about the world that is actually invisible to the eye. So yes, yes, we experience this human world, but this world is not the ultimate reality. There is a spiritual reality that's more true than this. This is a world of effects. Effects change. So I'm cleansing myself from all that's not loving toward my, my brother and toward my world. Now, it is a spiritual truth that everybody on the face of the earth is our spiritual brother and sister. And I know we go, oh, God. Can I put them up for adoption or something like that? You know, oh, no, I don't want to be spiritually connected to them. But this is, this is, this is it. You know? What we bring to it has everything to do with our seeing. Right? You know, three people see the Grand Canyon and view it from their occupations. You know, so, so an archaeologist says, what a wonder of science the Grand Canyon is. And the clergyman says, oh my God, one of the glories of God. And a cowboy says, what a terrible place to lose a cow. <laughs> yeah. So, because we all bring something to it, right? We all bring something to every relationship, to everything we see. So we want to catch ourselves in the midst of those thoughts and feelings that are not expressions of divine love within us. Because fear and limitation is everywhere in our culture. Have you noticed? It's everywhere. Right? But it's not the spiritual truth. It is not God ordained. So either we will give into the fear in culture, the fear that's in our culture, right? The limitation that's broadcast at us all the time, or we will focus on the spiritual truth about God within us instead. See, the world around us seems again and again and again very crazy at times because we've had crazy training in how to be and how to live and how to think. And what's important? We've had crazy training. And what happens as we mature spiritually is that we let go of that old training, we unlearn it, we embrace greater spiritual truths, we embrace, embrace greater ways of being, we encourage like-minded people to be in our life. It seems to me that we have very often mixed up the cause with the effect. Mm -hmm. Cause, science of mind teaches us, is within. The effect is always out here. We make things more painful and difficult by trying to rearrange the effects all the time rather than going to directly to the cause and reminding ourselves and filling our mind again and again and again with the truth about the cause. The first cause is within. Now, no one affects what we are and what we do. God in us is complete right now. So what I mean is that nobody can have an effect on you without your permission, without you taking in. You know, if somebody says something to you, you can say, eh, pff, let it go. Or somebody can say something to you, and you can take it home and nurse it and feed it and grow it and build it a room on your house, you know, <laughs> until it just grows and grows and grows. We can tell ourselves, you know, I will not be a victim of my old loveless thinking. This is a very self-empowering thing to do. You know, I will 
work on my consciousness. I will affirm. I will do spiritual mind treatment to express divine love. I will treat myself to be free from limiting beliefs. This makes everything better for everybody. Whatever we have going on in our life, you know, the best way to move through it is to be more loving. It's for everything. See, well, I have this difficult neighbor who doesn't like my dogs. What am I going to do about that? I'm going to love them. <sighs> you know, my human personality does not want to do that. Loving them is really low on my list. But I have lived many years according to that thinking and have not found it to be a particularly fruitful outcome ever. You know, it's just my own stubbornness. But I don't want to love them. I don't like them. Blah, blah, blah. Too bad, is what the universe says. Because I want my life to continue to get better. I want my consciousness to continue to grow. I want to continue to have healing and expansion in all the wonderful ways that are possible. <sighs> so the best way to move through anything and everything is to be more loving. See, that is the great expression of God within us. That's the highest consciousness we seek. If we maintain this consciousness, yes, absolutely, all things will be added. So now think about that person one more time. That one person in your life, maybe you've just pushed them to a back burner, or you've said, oh, they're not even part of my life anymore. I don't have to give that any attention. But if they came to you, it's worth doing. Right? Ernest Holmes says, all is love, yet all is law. And then he goes on and he says, love points the way, and the law makes the way possible. So we say, God, I don't know how to have love in my heart for this person. I don't like them. I have so much opinion. How, I don't know how to do that. Then I think our first step is to say, God, love that person through me. Because humanly, I don't know how. But like Ernest Holmes teaches us, there's a power for good, and we can use it, and it can also use us. So God, I don't know. Humanly, I have so much story about this person I work with. I have so much energy on my neighbor. I don't know how to love them. But you do, so love them through me until I can do it on my own. So what I'm asking people to do is you pick someone in your life, you don't have to tell anybody. They can just be your secret little prayer project for 30 days. 30 days, and if you would give them a little bit of your loving, positive, high-minded, spiritual energy, I guarantee you something would shift and your life would be better. Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward now for a moment to recognize that right here where we are, God is fully present in its entirety, that we are filled with the qualities, the attributes of the infinite mind, that God within each and every one of us is the most true, most real thing. And so in this awareness, I speak the word for us today that we are on the path of love, and that is in fact the path of God, that we affirm together that love is real and anything else is not that. And we are willing to make a step forward in our spiritual growth today and absolutely take all the negative energy off of one person in our life, one situation, one circumstance. And so we include in our prayer today our family members and friends and loved ones. We know that right where they are, God is. God expressing perfectly, fully, completely. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world around us. So those things that pull at our attention, we say God is right there. Those things that make us fearful, we say God is right there. Those things that look chaotic and lacking, we say God is right there, on the job, fully and completely. We bless our church. We bless all churches, synagogues and temples and mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together, that there is raising up, that we all get to be healed. And so with a full heart, I say thank you, God, that this is the truth. I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen.